Hello, hello, it's debating time. The podcast of debates. And Sebastian, very relaxed at home, I think, this time. So right. for once, he's not out of the country, not traveling, not sitting between hotels in Thailand, not smoking any pot anywhere. You're at home where it's still illegal to smoke pot, right? Switzerland has a hard stand on pot. No, I can't smoke, actually, because I have lung issues. That's actually oh. not a joke. Uh, okay. Yeah, because of these like lung defect. Thank you, mom, if you're listening. She's probably listening. Uh, <laughs> it's apparently a defect. And I had these pneumothorax attacks three times over the past four years, which were quite surgery. And it makes me particularly upset when next to me, I think the second time I had this uh, pneumothorax, which is air between the lung and the pleura. So the problem is if you have too much air, it crushes your lung and prevents you from breathing properly. So you need to get this, this air out. And what makes me upset is that next to me in the hospital room was a guy who was smoking heavily and had the same or, or similar condition. And I don't smoke. Uh, <laughs> so I felt it was a bit unfair, but life is not fair, that I was in a similar situation without having ever smoked a cigarette. Mm. And the only thing that the guy was waiting to do was to uh, escape the nurses from the hospital to go on a break and smoke <laughs> by the window. <laughs> Seriously, he just had oh, a surgery. Man. Anyway, yeah, that, I took my revenge that, by stealing his internet password. I looked it up, by the way. Weed in, in Switzerland is illegal. I think my neighbors upstairs know that very well because every time <laughs> I go home, and, uh, there's only three apartments in my building. I'm on the first floor and there's the second and the third floor. And the guys from the second floor, I think, are smoking every day because when I come in, there's like this, this whiff of weed smell in the in the main staircase anyway. So. But, uh, I mean, it's too bad that you're not allowed to smoke, but you can still have cookies or there are there are plenty of creative ways to to not smoke pot, but take it in other ways. Tell me more about it, Doug. You seem to know a lot about the topic. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know a few people who live in California that helps you a lot with your education around weed. <laughs> people in california are you talking about my boss our yeah, boss no, no. I, our <laughs> boss i cannot even picture smoking pot but it, uh, that's a different story but uh in in california it is legal to to have cannabis to produce cannabis to smoke cannabis to buy and sell cannabis the whole thing is decriminalized and uh, so did canada right Can when when did canada decriminalize it i think it was a few weeks a few months ago actually Literally, yeah, it was a, a campaign promise. Uh, interesting enough, I just realized it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Well, it has something to do, but it's completely stupid, my remark. But California starts with CA, Canada starts with CA, and cannabis starts with CA. I think there's a pattern. Who's next? CA. That's it. <laughs> Cameroon. My bet is on Cameroon. Let me put that to the test. Cannabis, Cameroon. They have some issues there because it's a, it's an ex-French colony and there's a minority, uh, which is English speaking, which is, I think, trying to gain, gain some autonomy and they're gonna, getting cracked down by the French speaking authorities. So I'm not sure they're talking about legalizing cannabis at this point. I think it's about legalizing English. So in, in Cameroon, uh, cannabis is illegal. Uh, the drug is locally referred to as banga. But it has a long tradition uh, because in the end, this is also a very important aspect, right? To be only half joking here. Cannabis is not only for recreational purposes, also a medical drug as well. So people use it as a pain reliever, as a antidepressant. So all these things are also connected to the whole discussion because uh, there are like, uh, it's not only just to feel good about smoking weed. There's also a movement around decriminalizing uh, self-medication with cannabis. I had no idea you were an expert of ancestral Cameroon medical practices. Wow. Like on that one. And <laughs> um, I don't know well, how you do it. Yeah, like, I, don't know if I, you can, I can tell you it's, a, it's an old practice that uh, had been around for a really, really long time. It's called using Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, and that's what I used. <laughs> I think we should have that debate. Can you use Wikipedia as your single trust or as your main source of information? I have to admit um shamefully that i do go to wikipedia a little bit too often without necessarily verifying all the sources yeah i do think i don't take the time put it to the test i would say you witness cameroon and you try to sell cannabis there 
And if you're jailed, then it really is illegal. Uh, since you're the expert about Cameroon, <laughs> why don't I invite you to come to Cameroon and do this? <laughs> I'm busy. I'm busy trying to find the people who won the iPad. Uh, or was it an iPhone? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still waiting. On that note, did you realize Lord Buckethead himself liked us on Twitter? And I do think I'm done. I mean, we, we achieved everything we ever wanted to achieve with that debate. If you get a like from Lord Buckethead, and maybe you want to remind our listeners who Lord Buckethead is, because maybe not everyone has listened to our previous debate on that topic. Right, right. Lord Buckethead is a satirical politician running traditionally in the race for the prime minister's office in Great Britain. And Lord Buckethead is, I forgot, some alien from some weird planet. So in the end, it's somebody who's trying to expose uh, stupid uh, things in politics, if you will. But the, the, the law, the election law in Great Britain is as such that he has a right to be in certain events next to the running prime minister and the future prime minister. So there are tons of pictures where Lord Buckethead himself, and he wears a weird helmet. He's like a, a weird version of Darth Vader, if you will, almost. He's completely in black and has a weird helmet and uh, making fun statements every once in a while. And there are plenty of pictures where he's in official events connected to the race for the prime minister office as a candidate. And Lord Buckethead, it turns out, has a Twitter channel. And Lord Buckethead may even have listened to our debate. I, don't I, know. I hope so. The thing is, he has not, as far as I know, said anything about cannabis. As you can see, I'm trying to come back to our main <laughs> topic today. <laughs> he has offered free bicycles for everyone. He has wanted to legalize the hunting of fox hunters uh, themselves. Um, so I guess that's a funny one. But there is nothing about cannabis. So today we're going to talk about whether Canada made a mistake in legalizing cannabis because as far as I, as, as I know, it's one of the only countries with, I think, Uruguay, which has offered to legalize cannabis. I think Uruguay was decriminalizing. Not too sure about this. But Canada is much more... What are you looking but at? Me? California? Did you forget yeah, what I just said earlier? That California legalized cannabis? Country. 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 Come on. Fine. Canada and California made a mistake. <laughs> we'll change the title in legalizing cannabis. Hmm. What if I have an argument that makes a, makes a point for Canada and not California? I have to think if it's smart to agree with you. What's wrong with you today? You're attacking every single thing I say. Yeah, we have I, not even started the debate. I opened the leaderboard and I saw that you're leading with two debates. Ah, by now. <laughs> that's why. Now we have the root of the problem. Ah, I need to expose incredible. your non-trustworthiness to our listeners. So they, they go and help me winning some debates instead of always giving the votes for free just to you because they like your voice so much better. It's okay. I control the backend database. I will add a few Probably votes. Probably the, the only one who occasionally votes for me because she's more neutral and not uh, and immune to your to your soothing voice is your mom. She probably listens really to the arguments. Others are just torn to their side because you make uh, make such a uh, good sounding argument. Not even true. Even my girlfriends don't vote for me. My wife doesn't even listen to us. All right. The flip of the coin has decided that I will be in favor of the motion, which is I will defend that Canada made a mistake in legalizing cannabis. And Dirk, you'll be against that. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. Canada has become, whether you like it or not, a criminal state. Criminal not just cynical. It wants to look like the friendly, nice country which nobody cares about, but actually it's not. And it's exactly the same when it comes to protecting the environment. And the reason I'm going to go and digress right now with the environment is Trump. He's a creep. He's unpleasant to look at. But at least he's not a hypocrite like Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, when it comes to climate change. The reason I bring this up is because you get the impression that Canada is going to protect the environment, but all they do is dig up more carbon and sell it to people to burn. And he's hard at work to pushing new pipelines through Canada and the US to carry more oil. That's the general hypocrisy I want to denounce here about Canada, which wants to look like the friendly guy. Also, there's a misconception 
cannabis is usually considered a soft drug. It's still a drug. In fact, and I don't, I've looked into the topic a few times, the THC, the, the dosage, the compound which goes into cannabis, the contents have tripled on average since our parents' generation when they use cannabis as hippies. And that THC is a key indicator of the potency of a cannabis product, which means today people don't realize they're smoking weed and it has not the same effect. It's way more dangerous than it used to be. Who looks into these details? Nobody cares enough. It's not because millions of people engage in recreational drug abuse, not just use, I would say, that it makes it any less dangerous. And yes, we should probably adopt a similar stance regarding alcohol and tobacco. And other drugs in that case. If you legalize one thing, why not legalize everything? It's crazy also for me to think that in a few hundred years, all these drugs will be replaced by non-harmful equivalents. And in the meantime, people will just continue using toxic products. And let me just show you some of the issues encountered over the past few weeks. Some of the uh, weed was mislabeled. And there was a headache for uh, a specific store on the actual THC levels. And the map of Canada is, is, is completely uh, a patchwork of where one people can shop for mar marijuana. For instance, in some cities, you can smoke a joint on a sidewalk, not in another city. In some other areas, you have to go to a specific zone. And in other instances, in other cities, you can't smoke within 10 meters of a bus stop, a patio or a doorway or a window. So it's a complete mess of how this is implemented. And I have not even gone into the details of uh, everything of how much this is a mess. So yes, Canada made a big mistake in legalizing cannabis. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. Nope. Canada took a rational and good step. And the most obvious argument you already tried to take off my plate. And that is just compare the effect of alcohol and tobacco, which are both, by the way, legal in Canada. And both are among the most lethal killers, just like in every country on this planet where, where they're both uh, legal. Now, you said, yeah, maybe we should take a hard stance towards all drugs then. Yeah, try, many countries tried, famously the US, and failed. So it, it's not working. By the way, newsflash, it didn't work for cannabis so far either. So it's only a choice between having legal access to ca uh, cannabis or illegal access to cannabis. But that aside... Um, people are known to be violent under alcohol. They are not under uh, cannabis, no matter the, the level of cannabis you have. The situations people use cannabis are different than the ones people using alcohol in. And there are multiple costly health problems associated with alcohol, not associated with cannabis. So I do think the rational argument here is Cannabis is not doing nearly as much damage as other drugs, but costs a lot if you have to enforce a ban on cannabis. And there are plenty of totally appropriate use cases, for instance, like uh, um, use cases like trying to self-medicate against pain, use cases by using it as an antidepressant. So there are use cases where people use cannabis for totally legitimate reasons that in the past had to hide that and were basically criminals doing it because it was criminalized. So Canada did the right thing by saving a ton of money and effort uh, for the taxpayers by calling it as it is, which is, uh, it is a weak drug. It is a drug that has more positive effects than negative effects to some people in the, in the society and not nearly as much damaging effects than alcohol or tobacco, which are already legal to use. So it's hypocritical to just keep it banned just because we call it a different drug and call it more uh, drug druggy, for, say, for a lack of a better word, than the other drugs we already deem to be okay being used broadly in society. So no, Canada made no mistake in legalizing cannabis. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. This is all just about money. The state just wants to find other ways, other revenue streams to make money. And it has nothing to do with trying to fight mafia, uh, which would be selling drugs. Um, you mentioned the violence, uh, which does not exist for cannabis smokers. Well, here's the thing. It's not just by the violence. It's also, also the risk that people take by driving after having smoking pot. It's also the addiction problem, which, by the way, also exists indeed for alcohol. It's not because I'm saying it's a mistake to have legalized it that I'm saying it should be criminalized. There's a difference. 
right? You can actually have a middle stance, which is not legalizing it, which is not for the state to regulate anything, but also don't put people in jail for it. It makes no sense. So I'm not having the complete opposite stance either. I'll give you another example. Morphine. Morphine is also very useful for medical use. I had to have morphine when I under, underwent and uh, surgery and after surgery. That's not that's, That doesn't make it any more legal for consumers to produce morphine-based products and sell it to other consumers. We already don't have a much advice when you go into a pharmacy. No offense to pharmacists. But how often did I go to a pharmacy to buy, depending on the country, by the way, uh, a quite strong medicine, which I required, not necessarily on prescription, and I get no advice before actually buying it? Are we going to get any advice before smoking pot? Probably not. There's not going to be any health education, regardless of people what we'll end, we'll end up doing. It's a hypocritical stance. For instance, also, by October of next year, Canada will also have to put new regulations in place for cannabis edibles. You mentioned cookies uh, before the start of this debate. And for now, that remains banned. That remains banned. And the fact is, in Colorado, another U.S. state, they made some terrible mistakes. That's what the governor of Colorado says himself. They did not regulate the number of doses you could put in a, into one brownie. So people would take a normal size brownie and they put four doses into it. Right? And people had no idea they could actually overdose on marijuana. Turns out you can. There's so many issues. Is it really the priority? For instance, when you start legalizing, it opens the door to more issues, such as what should be the type of packaging? What are the serving sizes? What kind of products can you put marijuana into? The labeling, how should it look like? All those things are to be thought of before actually selling or legalizing uh, uh, cannabis. And you can bet you this is not in place. And overall, is it really the government's highest priority today in today's world for big democracies like Canada to think about legalizing cannabis as opposed to knowing what to do with immigration, with terrorism, with the economy, with a slowdown of the economy, with trade war, with the trade wars with the US? Really, cannabis is a high priority right now. I think it's just a way for the Canadian state to make money off its users. That's it. Nothing more. It's just a hypocritical stance. So I think certainly for all these reasons, Canada made a big mistake in legalizing cannabis. Next up, Dirk. Oh boy, uh, you're mixing a lot of things here together that I believe don't belong together. But let me try. Let let me try to address this one by one. So first of all. It's all about the money. Of course it is. It costs a ton of money to enforce laws that criminalize cannabis. So not criminalizing it actually saves money. Secondly, if you criminalize it, it's that does not mean it's going away. That means there's a black market. And you, you have the same problems, but none of the benefits. So you're not making any money off that black market. I agree. So probably they also look forward in actually having it out in the open and making a, a bit money on that. I looked it up. About 9% of cannabis users, heavy cannabis users, um, are said to be have a, a use problem. Now, cannabis is a drug that's not leading itself to violent behavior or the things that we usually find uh, um, specifically worrying about drug abuse. People that are using cannabis too often have have all sorts of medical problems. I'm with you on that. Everything, if overdosed, is a problematic uh, um, substance. But uh, it's 9%. There are worse numbers in plenty of other substances, not even things we consider drugs. So that that is uh, the other argument. The third one you made, oh, yeah, you can overdose on cannabis. Guess what? You can overdose on water too. So you can overdose on anything. That doesn't mean you have to um, call it illegal. People are grown-ups. People are free people. People are uh, making their own choices, their own decisions. I don't think it should be, and that's your, your final argument there, it should be the priority of the state either to, to regulate every aspect of your adult life. If you want to smoke weed or drink alcohol or smoke tobacco, as long as you don't damage anyone else, it should be your call and not the state's call. And in that regard, actually, the decision Canada took is win-win-win. So it, people who smoke weed before can now do so without fear of uh, of being criminals. 
people who legitimately try to use pot for uh, may maybe medical reasons are in the same boat now because in many countries illegalizing or criminalizing cannabis actually had the opposite effect so those who want to do it on a criminal stance still do it just secretly and those who have a legitimate reason had no access to it uh, I agree there you can do regulation around that and there's that middle stance but it costs money and you can save all of this by, sa by calling it as it is it's a minor problem it's something you shouldn't spend too much resources on to start with and just by decriminalizing it you get rid of the pain to enforce it you make additional money and the situation is pretty much the same as before there have been countries that tried that before and uh, the the results are encouraging so i i would still maintain it is a good decision and canada was right on taking it final statements Sebastian goes first. Canada wants to look like the friendly guy. It's not. Just like the government of Canada does not care about the environment, sorry to say, they don't care about the health of its population. This legalization opens the door to so many problems. What do you do with space cakes? The dosage that you are going to put into it, the packaging. And when I say it's a mistake of legalizing it, I'm not saying criminalize it have a neutral ground. And instead, if you really care about the health of the population, instead of trying to make money and being hypocritical about it, focus on reinforcing health education. Because despite what you say, I firmly believe that people are dumb when it comes to health education. For the most part, they don't know the consequences. I don't think they know what they're doing. So don't criminalize them, don't put them in jail, but reinforce health education and don't start dipping into that area of opening and legalizing a drug because then it just opens the Pandora box to so many more problems that I don't think indeed the state should be involved in. So yes, Canada unfortunately made a big mistake in legalizing cannabis and I'm, I'm worried about what's going to happen for Canadians in the years and decades to come when it comes to drug abuse. Dirk. It is a weird tactic. You combine environmental concerns, immigrants coming to Canada, all these topics that are important topics with smoking pot. Honestly, Sebastian, this is desperation. You try to make an as, as hard stance as possible. But the reality is smoking pot is the least of our problem. Just legalizing it gets rid of a ton of bureaucracy, a ton of costs, and actually even makes additional money. And I do think Canada never claimed that this is about being good and being seen as a good guy. They are, as most countries out there, as most governments, um, pretty cynical and practical about most of their decisions, no matter what the coloring afterwards by the PR departments may look like. And in this particular case, I do think legalizing cannabis was the right call and it remains the right call and yeah even there may be a middle ground but that mean the middle ground means you win nothing and you have even additional cost on top of it uh, while legalizing it just gets rid of all the downsides that you have as a state and i would argue you don't get as many problems as you make it sound and certainly not problems that have to do with the uh, the environmental stance or with uh, the immigrants coming into the country because they are pretty pretty much not changing the picture of how much effect uh, smoking weed really has thank you very much Do you know that we have a no drug use policy to do these debates, Zach? Uh, I'm pretty drug free, yeah, unless you call caffeine or or what is the equivalent in tea? Tea in yes, whatever it but is. But there's also caffeine in most teas, by the way, which I did not know until a few years ago. Did you know? Yeah, I do know. Well, it depends on the kind of tea you drink, but yeah, I yeah. do. But most teas, I think green tea does not have any caffeine. I don't know. I could be wrong. I I. I I believe, I'm not a tea expert, but I believe that white tea, green tea, and black tea actually are kind of the same plant. So unless not you're not a tea expert, but you're an expert of cannabis in Cameroon, like that you, that you have me disappointed. Uh, if I'm now start <laughs> using Wikipedia, I can turn into a tea expert any second if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I liked it that you were like, you know, very quick, very prompt. They had like, I, I, listeners could probably would not be able to tell that you were like, yeah, I'm I'm the drug addict here in that debate, so I'm all for using cannabis, baby. <laughs> <laughs>
honestly, I never smoke pot or tried cannabis or any other drug than alcohol or tobacco in my life. And so I, I don't even know exactly what I'm talking about. Everything I shared with you was stuff I read. So that's articles and uh, documentation and videos. But I have no first-hand experience. And I personally actually don't even care if people smoke weed. <laughs> but that's me. I, I'm in the same position. So, so we are um, both but, talking but, about drugs without actually having first-hand experience. That makes us well, real Well, the first-hand experience is all the, the puff of smoke every time I come into my apartment building because of the neighbors smoking. <laughs> so I get a free intake of drug <laughs> use without un unintentional. <laughs> What neighborhood are you living in? I, I had a different picture of Switzerland in mind, I have to admit. I, I don't know if I mentioned to you before, but I actually live in a village where there's probably more sheep and cows and chicken than inhabitants. Maybe and that explains why they're smoking, because it's pretty depressing. There's not even a cinema in this village. <laughs> and all the shops close at 6 p.m. on a Saturday evening, and they don't reopen until Monday morning. But that's kind of the same in Germany anyway. So. <laughs> but anyway, so so you actually you you're arriving in your apartment remarkably relaxed and at peace with the world, right? You usually don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. Cool. Yeah. All right, that was it. That was today's debate about whether or not it was a mistake Canada took when they decided to legalize cannabis. Where they greedy and despite all the problems with the immigrants and the environment decided to get rid of the I problem. I promise you did not smoke anything when I said that. Maybe. My point was just to, to emphasize the hypocrisy of it and to, to depict the Canadian state and other people, the Canadian state, the government, as taking as not being really caring about its citizens, but really trying to do what's interesting from a lobby slash Uh, money perspective. That's why I brought in the environment as an aspect of it because people have a lot of, I I, th I had the wrong perception, I don't know about people, that Canada was a strong supporter of uh, fighting uh, climate change, for instance. So the only reason I bring this up is to show the hypocrisy and we should not be fooled by this image of this big friendly country, which is Canada, which are Canadians, for the most part. Now we have uh, a few Canadian listeners, by the way, who are indeed very friendly. But the Canadian state, and Trudeau in particular, looks like this you know, handsome, at least to some people, looking guy, young prime minister, and actually has policies which I think are hypocritical. That, that was the reason why I brought this up. Maybe I didn't bring it the, the best of ways, but that was the, my, my rationale here. So all in all, we're both not experts in drug use, and we both actually don't care if people smoke marijuana. Is that a true assumption, or are you, do you actually care about whether or not people are allowed to to smoke Mariana. Uh, I do care if they, if they do smoke or not. I, 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 I'd rather them not smoking, to be honest. And especially because what I said at the very beginning, there was actually a, a deeper um, concept around what I said initially, which was, it baffles me to imagine that in a few centuries, I am certain we will come up with compounds, molecules, which will replicate the use case of cannabis, which is, you know, feeling high, maybe feeling less depressed, whatever it is doing today, without the negative effects. And in the meantime, people are ingesting tobacco, cannabis, alcohol, because there's no alternative or no reliable alternative to get a similar effect. So they're, they're kidding themselves, knowingly or not, by the way. And when actually in just in a few centuries, this will be fixed. So it does bother me. Uh, you're using this and in a way that is destructive to your body and your health. Um, again, exception made of the cases for, I don't know, illnesses and medical use, which is an exception considering the millions of people using it for recreational purposes. So it does bother me. What they do in their own house, I don't care. Like, mm -hmm. It's true. I'm very liberal in that sense. Right? But mean, the problem with smoking as opposed to tobacco, and I go in a lot of emerging countries when I travel for work and for leisure, The problem is, in those countries, it's what happened in Europe 20, 30 years ago, which was tobacco was not banned from public spaces, which means I would never go to a bar. Uh, first of all, I don't drink alcohol, but it doesn't bother me when someone drinks alcohol because it doesn't affect my health. But smoking is invading my own freedom. It's the same with cannabis. When I go and I'm, I'm joking about going to my apartment, and every time I go into my building, I smell this, this smoke of, of marijuana, it does bother me. Right? I'm yeah. not here to smoke this, and it's actually damaging to my lungs. So this is a problem. But that, that would be basically that 
that would go to the practice, right? So you could basically say, hey, let's ban smoking. But if you want to have it as a chewing gum or as a cookie or drink it or whatnot, I don't care. It's very much uh, an analog to banning smoking from public spaces, as happened in most of Europe, which I very much applaud. But it took it took decades to happen, right? And why? Lobbies. We know it's lobbies. Right? The tobacco industry does not want this to happen. And this is why in poor countries like Indonesia, like Thailand, you have so many young people still smoking, way more than in Europe, because there's not the same regulation about advertising. Mm -hmm. The problem with cannabis and other compounds and whatever you, you come up with in terms of drugs in their general sense is that there's no such regulation. It's a very new thing. It's a very new market. And it seems governments are not learning from past mistakes. It's a booming industry. Look at the share price of cannabis companies in Canada. They've exploded in terms of growth because people know it's a huge market. And there's very little regulation right now. They haven't decided on what to do with brownies for now. It's banned. But what do you know? What do you know is being sold so, in Canada? Yeah, so that's actually an argument that, uh, that you could have used, right? So the argument goes pretty much like this. Once you legalize it fully, that also means you automatically legalize communication and advertisement in all sorts of forms, which will increase the use, which arguably brings more people to the drug. And my counter argument to that kind of thing would have been that uh, first off, I would have doubts if the market actually increases. So we replace legal market with uh, illegal market with legal market. Um, and the other thing is um, that it stands to to be seen if cannabis is really a drug that comes on top of existing drug or if it simply is replacing tobacco, which might even have a positive net effect, right? If people, instead of smoking regular tobacco, start eating space cookies and whatnot, uh, it might even be better in the end. Um, but it, it is an interesting argument to make that when, when you legalize it, you also open up all communication channels because it's really hard to, and we see that with tobacco and alcohol. We, we heavily regulated in all Western countries, really, how you are allowed to advertise for it, but we cannot ban it because that would be the maximum level of hypocrisy when you say, oh, it's totally legal, but you have to, you have to keep it to yourself. Um, three, quick, three quick things. First of all, why did I not bring this up more in, in my argument? Well, it's because we discuss, right? I don't think of all these things. That's the whole point of us discussing. And then I come up with new things as we discuss. Mm -hmm. So I feel bad in hindsight, but well, it will it's be in the debate. Discussion, right? We come up with yeah. a refined argument because we discuss. The second thing is, uh, what I do know I think is happening is that people combine tobacco with cannabis. And I think that's the deadly combination. And that's my third point here uh, connected to this. I was, I did not know, but it's one of, in one of my heated arguments with a friend a few years ago about the use of tobacco. And I, tried, I was trying to encourage them not to smoke. I did not know, and I did my research. I did not know back then. But apparently the main difference where it becomes uh, dangerous for you is when you go from zero to one cigarette. So people who say, oh, I only smoke one cigarette a day, it's actually that difference. The increment between zero and one is more deadly in proportion in proportion than going from one to two cigarettes a day. You still increase your risk by smoking two cigarettes, but the risk is increasing less than if you go from zero to one. It's very much binary. I thought before that it was linear. You smoke zero, okay, one, two, it's just complete linear. Mm -hmm. Like you increase your risk proportionally. It's not the case. Right? So this is the problem also with, I don't know, I'm not a medical expert here, I didn't do the research. I would see, I would probably think it's similar to tobacco in that sense, that going from zero to no, no use to a bit of use or usage is actually not great for your health. And, and saying that, um, and also stating that we are not experts, but uh, my understanding, and ha I have been an, uh, a smoker like, until, in, in my mid, until in, into my mid-twenties. Um, myself but uh the, my understanding is that the main problem with tobacco is actually not the nicotine the main problem is um the smoking smoking everything else which generates like those hundreds of uh cancer cancer cancerous uh chemicals and uh, this is uh, why right now so many people move to vaping right they they kind of inhale that uh liquid kind of steam stuff which is not as hot, so it's not burning, and it doesn't produce all the, the chemicals that are produced by burning things. And so the, 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 what I tried to say is, 
in the end, we don't know. Even if people start using cannabis on top of tobacco, it doesn't mean that we we have a, a less healthy uh, society after all. could be that people, the whole society moves towards vaping and they start vaping uh, cannabis as well and, and whatnot. And we don't know. Um, that is a very, people keep saying, oh, cannabis could be an entry drug to other drugs. Uh, cannabis um, has maybe uh, side effects we don't know yet. All these things are kind of weak arguments because in the end we make a call for people that are adults making the call themselves and that's the place where I end up being. I feel like as long as you're not invading the personal space of others, make forcing you to walk through the smoke for instance, as long as you avoid this, it should be your call as an individual and an adult what you put into your body. And if you decide to, to smoke weed or tobacco or drink alcohol, uh, or any other drug, really, for that matter. You could say, uh, make a, a statement that this should be up to you. And then the opposite stance of that is, of course, as a society, we have costs associated with that. So when somebody is a drug user, that costs money, depending on how likely it is that they have an illness that's not terminal fast enough <laughs> to be cynical about this. Or um, in case of alcohol, the main cost, I think, is aside from the sickness, also what people cause in traffic or as a, a, a being uh, violent all of a sudden when they use alcohol. So these costs, you can actually look at these costs and at some point make a trade-off and say, as a society, we, want to, uh, we don't want to take these costs and therefore we make it illegal. And that's the other call. And in that equation, actually, cannabis, from all accounts I've seen, is the weakest drug you can look at. Friendly. There, there gotta be some drug use in there. I think all the all the Canadians I know are off the charts friendly and polite. And here, finally, I know. Here we go. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's close this down. Thank you for listening. You know what you have to do now. You can listen. You can. You can listen. You can listen to this debate over and over again. Uh, if you did not have enough, you can oh, recommend yeah. it. If to you're your if you're still not convinced by my side, listen to it again. <laughs> And drug use or abuse is up to you. Um, we don't. I don't recommend it. I don't think you recommend it either. Uh, in any case, but we also don't judge. For, I don't judge. All right. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for our next debate. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.